Hi everybody, nice to see you again. Today I'm going to show you how to use the paint function in the latest Up Studio 3. I'm going to use the Articulate Dragon model by Majibir as an example to show you how I usually um, add additional colors to a more complex model. Okay, let's get started. As you can see, uh, I'm already I already loaded this articulated dragon model. So my plan is to um, use a blue color as the main color for extruder one, and a more transparent yellow as the second color for extruder two. And I will try to use some of the uh, sub model features and see if we can obtain green. I will first try to select some of those scales on uh, on the dragon and I will also try to add additional colors to the face and change color on the eyes and change the color uh, and and add color to the horns the tubes to the claws and to the spikes on the back and to the tail so let's see um, how I do this so first um, we right click on the model and we will see a new option here in the latest up studio 3 the paint option so select the paint option so when you click paint um, you will notice some of the differences you know most of the functional buttons on, on this menu uh, are grayed out so you are not able to click them and you have this exit button here um, to allow you to exit the paint mode so now we are in the paint mode and we can start to select the surfaces we want okay let's zoom in um, just click on this scale okay as you can see the scale just select um, by individual scale I can select with current settings I can click again click again and I can try to click a, another location here okay so let's um, press command Z to go back so when I click this one so all other uh, many of the other scales will also be selected this is because um, we have this uh, propagation angle um, here that allows me to propagate the selection um, when we can propagate the selection um, if the angular range is within this these settings so we can also try reduce the amount of the angular selection so we will able to see the selection become limit to the individual scale now click again so we select it so by using this method uh, we can quickly select a lot of individual scales or if you don't want to select them you can Press Command D to go back to the previous condition. Oops. As you can see, it is actually quite convenient. So for the minus, the minus range is for selecting. Um, concave features we can say that and for the positive values is for selecting more protruding or convex features so with these two value the combination of these two values uh, we will be able to uh, fine-tune the um, fine-tune the amount of selections Okay, so 
if we have a uh, made a pro appropriate uh, angular angular value for selecting so it's actually very convenient for selecting these scale features on the model okay so if you would like to use the cursor as a as a paint brush um, to select a very refined area so you can also press shift press shift and left click you can see that you are now selecting we are now selecting a a refined area that is working like a paintbrush okay but we also um, paint some of the areas which are not intended so I'm going to press option or a turn in the windows press option key and press and hold and then left click on the mouse then the cursor will become an eraser so that we can deselect the, the faces that we don't want to select so this is for fine-tuning the selection okay so remember shift right left click is paint alter or option left click is erase okay now I'm going to select more all right so now we have select enough of the scales and then I we will also try to add more selection on the face the dragon's face so as I said press shift and left click to select some of the facial features such as this eyebrow And I also would like to add some painting, paint, select some of this um, area on the claws. by holding the shift and left click Okay, the next step, so after we, we select all the services we, we want for this part, so we let, uh, right click on the model again, so we bring up this menu, um, we have some options here, so we select first one, the separate, that means we convert the services into 
a sub mode or with separate mode. So if you use cut, that means we will cut the services and remove the services. Stretch means we will extrude the services. Um, but I will first show you how to, this one works. Uh, when we select separate, then we will need to select a depth value. So in this case, I'm not going to select too, um, too much of that. So maybe one millimeter. Okay, it looks um, looks okay. There's no significant defects we can observe. And then we go exit the paint mode. And we can see that these um, surfaces were selected and convert into a submodel. And we can see these pink areas of this submodel. And it is um, under separate mode. Now we are going to select to change the separate into surface. So as you can see, this is separate. That means we cut a chunk of the model and convert it into a separate model. But actually, we are using we are going to use the surface mode, which means we are only going to change the perimeter. Okay, now the surface mode. And then let's try to slice and see what happens. So as we can see that um, the submodel were represent in a different color. So the extruder one here is uh, represented by blue, and the extruder two is represented by by yellow color, which is also corresponding to. Uh, what I'm going to use in the actual printer and if you use a cross-sectional view we can see that since we are using the surface mode only the perimeters are being printed are being printed by by the second extruder so the inside is still blue, but the outside is yellow. So in this setup, um, since the yellow filament is a little bit of transparent, so the blue color will still um, going through the yellow. So we may we will able to uh, produce a greenish effect on those selected scales and and the selected areas. So I'm going to show you later how it actually looks in the print. But okay, for now, um, for this part, we are finished. So I delete, I deleted the um, the preview pathway, and now we're going to continue to select some other features. Um, I'm going to uh, select the uh, the claws and and the tail okay so still we can use the paint mode the first select the main model let's select paint and then this time we'll just click on the click on the claws select them quickly Now I'm going to try also trying to select some of the teeths, teeths, but just shift and left click on the mouse. Select. And then refine the selection by erasing some of those unwanted faces. All right. So this part is finished. So we selected the claws, the tail, and the teeths, and now we are going to convert them again using the separate. We still use a smaller depth. Okay, let's check. Looks good. Still no defects. So a little bit of defects here, which is not selected, but mostly okay. 
let's do a slide see what happens oh we have to exit the paint mode first and then we just keep keep the latest selection as separate as they will be print as separate and in a solid color which is different from the surface mode they are supposed to be yellow uh, solid yellow in the final print Okay, here tips seems to be good. The tail is okay. As you can see, sir, here we can see some of the greenish area, which are the uh, purge region, a uh, purge volume um, preview. So that means uh, if we are not going to print the purge tower and the uh, preview will give you a estimate area where the purge, purged mixing, uh, I mean, the, um, where the color bleedings will be. So this representing a tiny volume of uh, a mixing material that will be print on the model. But since this is not finalized the pathway, so we can just ignore it for now. It looks okay. Okay, we delete the pathway again. And we are going to add uh, some more of selections. So I'm going to select the uh, horns, the eyes, as well as the, uh, the spikes on the back. Okay. So uh, this uh, this time I'm going to I'm going to use a different strategy. So instead of using the paint mode, I think it will be easier and more straightforward to use um, to use a submodel, uh, a simple geometric submodel to select the area. So I just click this plus icon to add a submodel, and then I will have some of these. Uh, preset geometric models I can also select an individual file which I modeled separately but this time I'm going to select a sphere I mean you select separate mode okay I'll just change this to like 7 diameter now now I have this sphere here and let's move it to the to the eyes of the of the dragon. Okay. So just move it into the the head to overlap with the eyeball. Okay, it looks good. Let's do this again. Sphere. Okay, looks great. And using the same principle, we are going to add two more for selecting the horns. To make them also to print with a solid yellow color so instead I'm just trying to use a, a cube to cover a large flat cube to cover the, the spikes I can use this Okay, so uh, if this, if 
square p on x and y okay put this on the back Make sure it is covering the spikes we want. So now we can see we have this dragon uh, print in different colors. Um, although we can only see um, blue and yellow here, but I actually expect the scales to be green. And then the spikes are also completely printed by yellow. And then if you see the tail is also solid yellow almost solid yellow but the scales only have yellow color on the surfaces the claw we have um, the outside section the section that facing outside print by yellow but there's some still some of the blue in the inside Okay, so we see this eyeball, see the eyeball inside, inside the dragon. Okay, that's it on the software side. Let's show you how it prints.